Hello and welcome to I Think You Think. This is I Think You Think, and my the blue thing is missing. There's my the blue thing. That <laughs> thing is there. There we go. Hello, today is August 7th. Even though I always say hello, I always, because it's there, written. I should get rid of that. All right, today is August 7th, 2013, and you're listening to I Think You Think, a podcast that puts a new spin on debate and discussion. We are not drunk this week yet. I'm Justin. On the other side of my computer screen is James. Howdy, folks. And Sequoia. Hi. And the podcast. The podcast has joined us, as always. Let's see the podcast. Oh, bye, podcast. There he is. Okay. <laughs> Hello, podcast. So, uh, uh, those are all the people. We're the hosts. We carry no credentials <laughs> worth noting. I think you think is a podcast focuses on what we, your hosts, think and uh, also what you think. Too many times we spend debates and discussions talking past one another. Not enough time trying to learn and understand why someone thinks what they think. This is what makes I think you think different because we are focused on why people think the way that they do and why we think the way that we do. James and James Sequoia and I believe that the form of ideas should be open to everyone and everyone should have the opportunity to challenge and be challenged by ideas. We're not here to pass judgment but merely discuss ideas and topics. This podcast first and foremost is a conversation between us and hopefully you. Feel free to email us, follow us on Facebook, Twitter and at the Chicago Now blogs. I do have the links this time. But you can find them in the underbar of the video. If you write fast or to have a photographic memory, facebook.com slash I think dot you think, chicagonow.com slash I dash think dash you dash think, and on Twitter at I think underscore you think. Uh, I think you think is produced by Stolen Arts Productions and is recorded live at Fisher International Studios. How is everybody doing this evening? Woo! Pretty much sums it up. <laughs> there we go. We are that excited. So this week we are talking about uh, strange religious practices. Um, again, these are what we think are strange religious practices. If they are not strange to you, by all means, please feel free to email us and tell them what, tell us why they are not strange. Uh, offer to come on the show and talk to us about why you do not think that they are strange, and we can have a conversation about it. That's what we're here for. Um, for you. There you are. Um, before we get into that, though, we all like to go around and sort of talk about the things that are eating up some of our time recently. Uh, I don't know which direction I went last time, so we're going to go with Sequoia because she looks prepared. Uh, lately, what's been eating up my time is the show Orange is the New Black on Netflix. I have been watching it obsessively. I actually watched like six episodes in a night the other night. I I, can't, I know I I stayed up all night. I can't stop watching it. Like I'm just I have one episode left and I'm freaking out. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my like it, the I'm obsessed. Is it that good? It's that good. It's like one of the best shows I've seen in the past probably like five years. You haven't seen Walking Dead then? I have seen Walking Dead and I think it's better than Walking Dead. Oh wow! Can, I think can it. You boot her off the show. <laughs> I think it might actually be better than Sherlock, which was my previous obsession. Oh, like, wow. That's... I'm really hooked I'm, on you it. Just, you might just be working too much to say it's better than both of those. <laughs> I'm really it. identifying with prison right now, so <laughs> that might be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <clears throat> so now we all have a show that we, we can go watch. I've been looking for a new show to watch, so I might try that one out now. But if it's, it's not good. as good as you said... I'm going to call you out on it. There's really, like, nothing to dislike about it. Like, it's there. It's just everything that a show should be, to be honest. I'm hyping it up too much. Actually, it sucks. <laughs> You're gonna it's horrible. It. Nobody watch it. <laughs> what about you, James? Anything eating up a lot of your time? Uh, today is day three of my nine-day vacation, so... Um... Yeah, just trying to like fill my days with fun stuff. About it. Is so, uh is State of Decay still paused? Yeah, but I haven't played in a long time. I need to like load it up and finish it and just be done with it. Yeah, yeah. Just finish it and get it over with and then you'll be like, Why did I waste this much time? Don't get me yeah. wrong, good game. Worth oh, spending yeah. the twenty bucks, people out there. One hundred percent. Yes. But the the ending is a little it's a little blah. Not yeah. that great. 
Um, so, there you go. Uh, let's see, what has been eating up some of my time? I'm still playing XCOM, again, because it's a good game. Um, I'm playing it, I'm not playing it on a really hard difficulty, but I am playing it on Iron Man, which uh, does not allow you to reload. Relo- you can't save the game and continue playing. You can only save and exit. So any decisions you make, any characters who die, anything like that. Um, luckily, I haven't had any of my soldiers killed yet, so I've been playing them uh, pretty carefully. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. I still haven't had a, a good night to take my uh, fancy new telescope out to use it, so it's just sitting here in my living room or my library. It's a room filled with books, so I guess it's a library. I think there's a pretty big meteor shower this weekend. Um, yeah, my wife had been saying that there's that, and then um, I think maybe later this year or even ne- next year, there I think there's a comet that's coming um, that we'll be able to see. So I, I haven't done any research, so I could be completely wrong. You know, kind of like the Apophis thing that I was way wrong on <laughs> from... For those of, for those who have been listening since last year, because we're on we're on episode thirty five. Yeah. Like wow, I mean we're 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 creeping up pretty quick on the full year cycle now. You know. It's getting close. It's getting close. We're gonna have to do something special. Maybe have a contest. Give something away. I don't know. Nothing big. T shirt. I don't know. Yeah. Nothing huge. So anyway, getting into the show. Uh, I don't even know what time we got started. Um, 9.50? We'll call it, yeah, we'll call it 9.50. All right, so there you go. We're about seven minutes in. Okay, um, so we are talking about strange religious practices. I have a laundry list of uh, things that I would be more than happy to discuss. I don't think we're going to get through all of them. Um, and so I want to give other people an opportunity uh, to start. James had a few. Sequoia, do you have some as well? Uh, no. You're the articles. unprepared one. I have articles, though, like, three of them I found, or two of them I found, like, while we've been talking. But I do have <laughs> articles, so... <laughs> so, let's go ahead and start with James, then. He had a couple that we were talking about during the pre-show, which you could have joined us if you had been in the Hangout. It's true. You should have jumped on your phone while you were walking home. Because that's safe when you're walking on the main road, and you could have joined the Hangout. It's not a main road, actually, so next time that will be the, the plan. It's probably not a good idea in the dark. So. Uh, but anyways, as far as religious practices that I find to be odd, this one's more outdated than odd, because when it originally came, or when they collectively originally came, there was good reason. And it's dietary limitations. You know, don't eat pork. Um, things like that, because when they originally came out, when they were originally introduced, it was for the safety of, you know, the people that followed that religion. You know, don't eat pork because, like, people don't handle pork right, and you could die. You know, the people still do it. You know, even though the original reason for it wasn't like a decree from their deity, it was a decision, you know, made just to protect them. And I find it very odd that. People still, you know, follow that to this day. I find it very, very odd and outdated. It, it's not, you know, because the pig is a filthy animal, which is not, um, or anything like that. It's just, you know, no one ever let it go. That was also that's also in the same portion of uh, of the Bible uh, in which bats are classified as birds. So. <laughs> You know, nice. Um, yeah, the, the, I had a. Uh, I had brought this up before. Sequoia wasn't here for it, so I will say it again. I had a uh, a wonderful history teacher when I was going to college, who um, who used to say that uh, you know religion was often very very good at controlling the masses, and when you existed in a time where you didn't have automatic weapons, you needed something to be able to control the masses. So that religion oftentimes, uh, religion and then also chivalry during the Middle Ages um, was one of the things that was kind of created to sort of control um, the masses of people. So there you go. Um, I've got uh, a 
kind of a heavy one that I'll get into in a second. So I want to hit. I want to see what Sequoia's got before I get into the one that I, I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to end up ranting on. So. Um. Well, I guess like off the top of my head, and it's sort of like an one that's really widely practiced, and I, uh, I communion to me is really strange. Maybe it's just because I've never ever been like in religion. Like I've I grew up in in a, an atheist household, so the whole idea of communion to me is always very strange. I've never done communion. I've gone to weddings, so they've been like, oh, they might do communion. I'm like, oh, I don't. Oh God, I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> it's the the whole idea of I guess it just it seems so strange to me eating the body of Christ and then sharing a glass of wine with a lot of people. It's not my idea of a good time either. At least with a lot of strangers, maybe with the right group of people. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a little much. I mean, and you know. I, I mean, I do want to say, that, you know, with all of this, this is no disrespect to, you know, anybody's religion or anything like that. It's just, it's, it's a foreign idea to me. So it's, it's just strange. So just a little bit of clarification, because um, I think probably out of the three of us, uh, I've, I've probably had the most religious background. I, obviously, definitely. definitely. Okay, because um, I, I grew up in a very Christian household. Um, and uh, was a very evangelical Christian at a time at a previous portion in my life, um, but there are there are different aspects to communion that you're talking about, and communion I don't find that weird. Like I, I understand the ritual behind it, and I get it. Like I understand why they do it as a ritual. I'm not a big ritual person. Like there are things that I find really interesting to do as a ritual, but just for the sake of them being a ritual. Um, but the the aspect of communion that I, I really think is weird is transubst transubstantiation which is a c Catholic idea and that's that when the priest actually blesses the communion, the bread and the wine, um, it actually physically, like actually alters and becomes not bread but literally, literally, not metaphorical anymore, literally the body and the blood of Christ. And so that's the idea of transubstantiation. And that's the one that I'm like, okay, so like in that concept, you are literally eating human flesh and drinking human blood. It's not a metaphor. It's not, you know, which really what communion has become is that metaphor for the Last Supper. And so mm -hmm. that's the whole that's the whole ritual behind it. Um and it's it's it goes back to the story of you know why Christ died on the cross and what he was doing and what it meant, and so communion typically is is a ritual surrounding the um, reflection on what the 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 deity had done to redeem his chosen his people, and so yeah, there you go. But I can understand how from definitely from an outside perspective why it would be weird. Because um, transubstantiation, even when I was a Christian, because I did not, I wasn't raised Catholic. I was raised uh, Nazarene, and then later um, Baptist, um, which doesn't mean much to most people. They're all Christian. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't tell you the difference, not even a, a little. I don't know that I've ever even heard of Nazarene before. Um, it's not as big a sect as like um, as Baptist, but one of the biggest differences between Nazarene and Baptist is the concept of once saved, always saved. Um, in the Baptist tradition, once you become saved, you are saved forever. So as a Baptist, technically, um, uh, because I became saved at one point, even though I'm an atheist now, I must still also be saved. Um, as a Nazarene, you could actually lose your salvation and have to get it back. Like, you would have to recommit yourself to Christ. You'd have to, re you'd have to ask again for him to uh, forgive your sins and such like. Um, so you are both saved and not saved. Correct, but I've also um, broken the only what the one command commandment that uh, cannot be uh, forgiven, and that is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit um, by saying that there is no God. Um, then I have committed blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, in which I cannot be saved. That is one of the 
commandments that you cannot break or you can't be saved. However, there are also other scripture verses that say that there are no commandments that you could break that you could not be saved. So, but if, if you became Catholic and one confessed that, you'd be okay. As long as I said the amount of Hail Marys that I needed to and whatever. Um, but as a, uh, a an atheist on the atheist experience, a show that I, I watch weekly, um, says he likes to refer to the Bible as a uh, choose-your-own-adventure in terms of um, what you want to pick and choose out of and kind of make your own sort of story. Well, it is kind of notorious for being able to be the foundation of both sides of any argument, you know, <laughs> morally. Yes. You know? I mean, it's a long book. Obviously, there's a lot of writing in there. Um, many books. Wrote, oh, yeah. I mean, but, I mean, it, you can buy it in one complete thing. It's... <laughs> You can't buy the stuff like you used to when I was a kid. <laughs> it's a tome. A tome. Is that a, is that a hippie mm -hmm. word? It is. Okay. Actually, oh. I think that's a little bit more of a hipster word, <laughs> to be honest. I was reading this tome, Harry, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, confession is another one that I don't really agree with. I don't know if it's that I, I find it strange that no matter what you do, if you go confess it and then they give you whatever number of prayers you're supposed to do, you're okay. Like you're forgiven or whatever it works. And I just I feel like when that was introduced, and this is just me guessing, it was probably to get people to come to religion, their religion, no matter what their background was, you know. Pirate, criminal, whatever. Like you can come here change your life, get a fresh start. But this is the modern world. Like, what about community service? What about actually going to the person you wronged and, like, addressing that issue with them directly as opposed to, like, secretly whispering it to some priest, you know, in a little closet, and then it's all good, even though you haven't actually literally done anything to make it better, whatever it is you've done. You know what I mean? Um, and as far as I know, confession covers everything. It doesn't matter what you did wrong. You can be forgiven in the eyes of God if you confess it to a priest. And that, I just feel like it's too broad-reaching. You know? If I steal a candy bar, yeah, I could probably, you know, whisper that into somebody's ear and be okay. You know what I mean? But if you commit, like, an actual major wrong against someone or just in general, I think there should be more than, you know, even if it's 100 Hail Marys and whatever, whatever. Um, I think that one is a little, I don't know. I, 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 just, I just don't like that. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't agree with it, I guess, is the bottom line. I feel, I feel well, it's it, odd. Wasn't uh, it at one point that, like, you had to, like, pay, like, literally for the sins that you committed after confession at one point in the church's history? Yeah, would, during, the, have... during the Middle Ages, um, there were... Uh, and the name escapes me right now. Um, I can't think of what they're called. But you could you could actually pay to get certain sins forgiven. You could pay to get uh, dead dead relatives and things like that into heaven. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, in in many of the cases, uh, the Crusades. Those who went on the Crusades uh, to the Middle East to take back the Holy Land. Uh, were guaranteed a place in heaven. That was what the priests were telling the soldiers, is that they were guaranteed a place in heaven if they went to fight in the Crusades, um, no matter what they did. So, I mean, you could get these people that either were like, oh my gosh, you know, this is my only way I'm going to get into heaven. And in a society where a caste system really existed, um, the ability to just be able to get into heaven was great. Um, that you know, and the church had a lot of power during that time because they were really the only very broad-reaching, uh, you know, societal governance. You had little, you know, uh, city-state governor mayors, but they didn't com control as much, you know, they didn't control as much as the as the church did. Right, right. Kind of weird. So, what else you got on your list there, Justin? All right, so my big one, and I'm just going to get this out of the way, uh, is I came across, uh, when, I was, when I was looking this up, because this was one I was kind of looking forward to, um, it, it, 
there's this this is this is just an example of what goes on especially in our society in the United States um, but around the world uh, and as an atheist as a person who uh, grew up as a Christian um, later realized my atheism only a few years ago um, I, I can at least relate to the, you know this not in so much as what happened between this mother and this son because that is not at all the relationship that my mother and I have um, uh, you know I just I just I, I feel for this kid so this mother and I'm not going to read the, the the letter um, but this this mother sent uh, a letter to her atheist son um, she appears to be Mormon because she references um, becoming uh, Disfellowshipped, um, yeah, defellowshipped or disfellowshipped, which is a a terminology that the that Mormons use. Um, that it, that's more than just okay, you're kicked out of the church. Like you're kicked out of the Mormon religion. Like you can't just go to another church, another Mormon church. Like you, that that you can't do that. You are not part of the church at all anymore once you're disfellowshipped. Um, but th it's it's incredibly heartbreaking. This mother, um says, aside from saying things like um, that she's not being coerced in what she's writing, you know, that she says, this letter is being written by me with no outside coercion or uh, influence because there are things I want to say to you. I mean, James and I talked about this a little bit before. If you have to say in a letter that that's going on, that you are not that, then that that's kind of weird. Like either yes, you actually are, and you're being told to say that you aren't, or you already exist in a society or a a group in which that could possibly be taking place, and you have to actually clarify that this is not one of those instances in which that is taking place. Um, but basically, she says that he's chosen his path in life, and she's chosen her path um, in her life, and she wants to do um, she wants to to follow Jehovah um, and and that means that she has to not associate with him not talk to him basically not be his mother think about him as not existing anymore but then she closes this letter with your loving mother now and forever and there's just such a great heartbreak to that because you can almost see throughout this letter this as a human as a mother she loves her child dearly and has this disconnect between what how she feels as a human being towards her son and how she, her, this religion that she's within has warped her mind in which she feels that the only way that she can interact with her son anymore for the rest of his life and her own life is to not interact with him like that is what her god would want or that is what her religion would want and that's these are this is exactly one of the things that um pisses me off about religion and that i it's a strange religious practice that i just i can't i can't wrap my mind around at least for some some of the more modern uh takes on religion they're trying to be more inclusive um, they're trying to say okay you know i believe in god you don't believe in god that's fine we can still hang out you know, maybe one day you'll believe in God. Um, I've even had Christian friends of mine um, express to me uh, that they think that I will go to heaven because when I get to heaven, God will say, why didn't you believe in me? And I'll say, dude, you know, I, I wanted proof. You knew I needed proof. You didn't give me the proof, you know, so it's not really on me. And so they think that I will be able to convince like, God. You, that you're okay, dude. Serious, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like, Something. what the hell? Um, I mean, because because they're trying to they're trying to get, and that's the thing that I I just it pisses me off about religion, and um, you know, there you go, yeah. So there's my rant over. Rant done. Well, that like defellow, whatever it was, like when you're completely banned is exact. Because after watching the Westboro Baptist Church videos, it's exactly what they do. You're dead forever once you turn your back on the religion, and. I, I, I agree. That's I, I hate that. Like, there's us, and then there's the rest of the world mentality. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very I don't know, elitist. I guess is one way to put it. 
and it's a very narrow worldview. You know, um, I would like to believe that if there is some sort of afterlife, there is some sort of deity watching over us. They're not going to care what religion you followed. They're going to care about your actions. That's what would be important, and that's how we should be judged by our fellow people, not by I'm a Mormon or I'm a Jehovah's Witness or I'm a Catholic or a Christian Catholic. I was recently at a uh, a wedding, and the marriage ceremony was very religious, and the person who was overseeing it was saying something. He's like Catholics, and then like he had to clarify Christian Catholics, you know, like and well, it was such an awkward moment. Right, you know, like, I mean, just he didn't want to be confused with those other people, you know, and it just, it seemed very, like, it, it, like he was being very prejudiced against other religions, like, didn't want to get associated with them. I don't really like it. It's not, you know, I feel like the best um, religious leaders, if you will, that I've met, you know, pastors and such, are not that way. You know what I mean? They're like, you know... You know, I, I'm a Lutheran pastor or whatever, like the leader of a Lutheran church would be. But they could, like, talk about the other religions, you know, in an acceptable way, in, like, an open way, and not have that, you know, what's on my plate is right and everybody else is wrong, you know. Because that's, that's a severe amount of arrogance. But we're getting off on a totally different subject. What are some other odd religious traditions you got on the list there, Justin? Uh, actually, I want to see if Sequoia had anything else. Uh, well, I actually know quite a few people who have actually had that happen to them when they came out about their atheism, if you will, as adults, you know, and maybe not to that extreme, but a very sort of, you know, we're disappointed in you and, you know, we need to limit contact for a little while while we deal with this, you know, like it's, like it's somehow somebody's belief Effect, somebody else's belief affects them, and I, I, I guess I don't understand that because I feel like even if you really want somebody else, you know, to believe in what you believe in because you're worried about their, like, soul, you can't make people believe things. Like, it's, it's a part of who you are. It's a part of your core, like... You know, you either believe or you don't, and you can't force people to believe just to make yourself feel better. Yeah, you can get people to fake belief in something in order to be accepted into some sort of society, but to a certain extent, and the more they've done on uh, studies on neurology, um, we don't have much of a control over what we do and don't believe. Um, there's almost it, it almost takes place in uh, a deeper part of our mind that we don't have access to in the conscious in our consciousness. Um, it's something even heck even decisions about what candy bar you're going to buy at the store. They're finding it takes place long before your conscious brain says, "Oh, okay, I'm going to get the Hershey's." I mean, I you know, like I said, I grew up in an atheist household, so. And I am an atheist still, and I never had to deal with, you know, my parents being upset that I was atheist, and, you know, my parents, um, even though, like, my dad was raised Catholic, and my mom, um, technically, I think, Christian, but religion was never a huge part once they got older, and my dad was, like, my dad was an altar boy when he was younger, but, like, there was never any, like, familial backlash over their choice of, you know, being atheist. And I just, I mean, I don't, I don't think that it's in some, like, I, I have never in my life ever felt like I could, like, I had the capacity to believe in God. I just don't, I just don't believe in him. And it's, it's not like I look down on anybody else for it, and it, it's not like I want other people to not believe in God if it's what they believe in. It's just very strange for me how you can be mad at somebody for what they believe when it really is not something that affects anybody else. How do you think your parents would react if you did become very strongly religious? Well, I remember when we were younger, my sister um, went through, like, a, I guess it was just a phase, I guess, where she was reading the Bible and talking about God a lot. And actually, I went, I actually asked to go to youth group a couple of times as a kid because friends were going to youth group. And I had friends that would invite that invited me to church one time, and I went with them. 
And my parents, up until I was sort of old enough to come to it on my own, never talked about religion. And if I had questions, they would answer them. And when I told my mom that I didn't believe in God, I didn't know whether or not she did up until that point. Oh, wow. They were very big on making sure that we, it was something we came to on our own. They didn't bring religion to us or offer up the options, but they didn't keep it away from us either, if that makes sense. Yeah. And my mom would actually encourage, encourage me at one point to read some of the Bible if I was curious about it. So I, I don't think it's anything that they would have been upset about as long as they still felt like I was being true to myself and not hurting anybody else sort of thing. Like, I think that's pretty much my parents in general. As long as, you know, you're not hurting anybody, we love you and you can do what you want. As, um, as the only parent here, um, and, and as my, I've, I've thought about, because I was a Christian when my son was born, um, and I only, I only realized my atheism, I don't know, six years ago or so, uh, so he was still relatively young. Even when I was a Christian, I believed that I wanted to raise him to kind of make his own determination. I never wanted my religion to be his religion. Um, and even even now, as an atheist, I, if my son grew up, and my daughter, obviously, too, um, and ended up as an atheist as well, I would be happy that they had used rational decision-making and had compared the evidence and, and had made a decision on it. But I don't hide, I don't try to hide it from them. Um, I know that when my son and daughter go and visit um, my in-laws, my wife's parents, they, uh, they will take them to church on Sunday mornings, and I have no problem with it. There's, there is, really is only one teaching uh, that, hands down, I will not tolerate, um, and I will not allow them to go to their church anymore if this teaching is ever given to them. And that's for them to be being told that um, if they don't accept God, then they're going to go to hell, and you know, and they're going to be tortured for eternity, or telling them that they deserve hell, anything like that. I will not tolerate that. Not at all. I don't care. You can tell. You want to tell them anything that God lives in the sky, that He loves you. Fine, whatever. You know, I, I will. I will answer any questions that they have. They should, you should be willing to answer their questions if they've got them. But I will not tolerate that he deserves hell. Any of my kids do not right. deserve hell. I don't believe. I don't believe that there's really anybody who does. I mean, to to the idea of eternal tor tor torture uh, and torment. I, I mean, there are horrible, horrible things that human beings can do. I don't think an eternity of torture. Uh, is is right uh, as as any kind of a punishment for something like that. So there you go. So another odd um, religious tradition is Scientology in its entirety. Anything yes. else on the list? Yes. <laughs> the whole the whole thing, man. Like what? Yeah. And Scientology is the weird one because that one, like, you can actually in there are people alive today who know when it began. Yeah. Like when it mm -hmm. began. It's not like a religion that started thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago. There are people alive who are like, yeah, I remember when uh, L. Ron Hubbard, Hubbard wrote his book and it turned into a religion. Yeah. I'm like, like, and, and that's, and, and then they wonder why, why I'm like, well, what, what makes Christianity special? Well, because it's 2,000 years old. So what? So what? I mean, you're talking about 2,000 years ago, somebody came up with some sort of a story. 40, 60, well, 70, 60 years ago, L. Ron Hubbard came up with a story, and it's a religion already. All right, whatever. Speaking in tongues. Strange religious Damn. practice. Yeah, that one's really weird. If you ever see the show uh, Jesus Camp, um, I think I'm pretty sure that there is examples of... Um, them uh, prompting children to get into the mindset and speaking in tongues. Um, yeah, so that's that's one of those really strange religious practices I just don't get. I feel like it it like needs a certain amount of talent though, because I don't think I could come up with that much gibberish that fast. Like, I don't I don't think I could even fake speaking in tongues if I tried. There is a uh, a pastor who's part of the. Um, 
the clergy project I think it's what it's called it's a it's an athe an atheist movement for um, pastors who are um, who have be who have become atheists um, but they can't come out as an atheist because their livelihood is tied up in what they do um, you know it, it could affect them very dramatically but they're trying you know they so um, the clergy project is a project in which they can connect with other clergy who are uh, who are become have become atheist and that they're you know they can work through things and and try to slowly come up with a way to get out of what they're doing um, you know I mean the thing about when when you go to become a pastor you kinda lock yourself in with a masters and sometimes even a doctorate in divinity and that's really all you can do and if you're sudden you know you suddenly realize that you're an atheist and you're like well what am I doing you know, mm -hmm. and it's not like you can just go get a job somewhere else. You're kind of, you've you've maxed out your, what you've really done with with your life, and so it becomes kind of weird. The only thing that could, yeah. would come to mind would be maybe being like a professor in theology, because I've actually, I read somewhere once, and this could be incorrect because you know. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Shocking, I know. What? Um, but <laughs> I, I did read once that like the majority of theology majors are atheists. That's weird. I, I, it's an I, odd fact. It seems. It seems hard to believe they might be deists. I mean, but I could I can imagine. I mean, reading the Bible certainly was one of the things that sort of led me away from. Um, Christianity was actually getting in and reading it, um, spending a lot of time with it, and spending a lot of time with all of it, not just select scriptures, um, being being directed to read certain things. Um, but yeah, I mean, once you get into a lot of the theology, um, the thank you the uh, uh, the, the a lot of the religion becomes. I mean, my 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 view on Christianity really expanded. Um, which later led to my atheism once I started to realize, you know, where these books were coming from, why there were multiple writers, you know, all of these things, um, and, and what it meant. But I was a Christian for a long time and still held those beliefs. Like, I, I, was, I was perfectly happy with two different creation stories in Genesis. I was perfectly happy with the, the two different Noah's Ark stories back-to-back -back, uh, in Genesis. Um, no problem with it. I didn't, I didn't have a problem with it. I was still a Christian. It wasn't that stuff that really led me away. Well, I'm I'm sure you're probably familiar. Uh, Christopher Hitchens. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read his book God Is Not Great? Uh, yes. Uh, well, I mean, I listened to it on tape, but yes. He, I, I think that's probably a perfect example of how like it's not really surprising to me that theology majors would tend to be atheists because in that book how he so like you know just sort of story by story goes through like the similarities in all the different religions mm -hmm. you know that came about from the same time so I mean I think that if you're you know studying religion from I think there are a lot of people who want to study it from just sort of like uh, the words escaping me, an educational point of view um, and a historical point of view because it is a huge contributing factor to, you know, how we, how things have come to be. I mean, no matter how atheist you are, you can't ignore the effects that religion have had throughout history. And so it, it's not surprising to me that atheists would, you know, be sort of drawn to, you know, how did this happen? Like, you know, how did each religion evolve? Where did it begin? What are the similarities? And I think you kind of would have to go into it with an open mind of not being biased by one religion if you're going to be a theology, like, professor. Yeah, I guess I guess if it was theology in general, when you say theology, my mind automatically goes to Christian theology, and so that's probably where my my error in thinking is. Um, I guess if I was thinking about it, I I don't know if I'd really if I really wanted to go to that level. I think I would rather go philosophy rather than theology. Um, if I was doing it, like I mean, it would be nice to study it, but I don't know if I would want to do it as a. And it's all about me, right? Yes. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For, <laughs> thank you for contributing to my ego. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, we have to the rest of the show breaking it down. <laughs> yeah. But hey, Justin, if I was looking to buy some jewelry, 
what would you do? Do you have any suggestions? I might, actually. As I um, use this as an opportunity to go get another beverage, we'll be right back. <laughs> Seamless. Yeah, as soon as I figure out where I put it. There it is. All right. And there we go. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> Obviously, he's got... He's, he's blowing his nose. <laughs> so, Strava Max... <laughs> Uh, this uh, so if you were going to buy some jewelry, this is a great place to go. Um, they've got some really nice jewelry. We've talked about it many, many times before. Good prices. Check them out. You can like them on Facebook and such like. Uh, we have uh, also on our Facebook. Um, I think the I think you think page has also liked the Strava Max page. <laughs> so we are opening Pop now as well. What? What? I don't know where you're, where you're talking about. <laughs> so, uh, yes, even fiber optic beads. So, anyway, um, yes, yeah, Strava Max. Uh, the jewelry here is made by the young lady who made all of our graphics. Um, so if you want to support us and support her for helping us out, please, please go and check out Strava Max. And nice. Now I'm yellow. Oh, it fixed itself relatively quickly that time. Nice. All right. Moving on. We've got about 20 minutes left of the show. Um, gotten through the speaking in tongues. All right, so here's another one. Uh, going back, going not, not back to Mormons, but uh, Jehovah's Witness have a belief in which um, they actually even carry cards with them that says that they uh, do not hold doctors... Um, uh, liable for this, uh, but they do not accept blood transfusions because of a uh, uh, scripture that says that you won't handle human blood and you won't ingest human blood, something to that effect, um, which kind of flies in the face of the whole transubstantial. I know Jehovah's Witness and Catholics aren't the same, obviously, but the Catholics believe that you are actually drinking human blood when you are having communion under transubstantiation, which I should point out that not all Catholics believe transubstantiation. Um, so there you go. Uh, anyway, uh, so blood transfusions. They will not get blood transfusions even if they're dying and they have to have a blood transfusion. Uh, they will not get them. Um, so maybe it's my uh, my preference for being alive as opposed to dead that makes me want to have blood transfusions if my option is have a blood transfusion or die. Um, and so that's why it's so strange to me. But, you know, there you go. Yeah, that, that's a weird one. That's an odd one. Did we want to get into some of the articles that we have? By all means. Okay. Sequoia, do you have a couple? Because I actually have some this time. Oh, my God. I know. I'm shocked. I don't know if I can recover. We need you a minute. Might be able to. It's a nice change for James to uh, be prepared. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, one that I, I do have hands. actually might possibly in the future, who knows, affect. Uh, well, I don't know about Justin. I don't think so. But James, both James and I, at some point in our lives, uh, apparently. There is um, recent problems with cancerous moles being hidden under tattoos. Uh -oh. This is something that they're starting to like think of. And I, I read that and I was like, I never even thought about that. So um, my full that, body like jaguar uh, spots is probably a bad idea. Maybe. It's maybe. Be sexy. <laughs> But yeah, I was talking about how like people have actually had moles go cancer at this, and that the only reason that these people even found out about it was because they had like laser removal like of the tattoo and then found the mole underneath. But that because of like the pigmentation and everything, like you don't notice when it starts like getting weird, especially like the really dark tattoos. Wow, like the ones so, on your arm, James. Yep. But I look at it all the time. I'm good. <laughs> well, then I like started thinking like. Do I have any, like, moles underneath my tattoos? I mean, I've got lots of freckles and shit, but no moles. So I'm, like, even more wary of, like, okay, I'm going to make sure all of my tattoos are away from any moles I may or may not have. So 
Not to interrupt your very fascinating uh, article, how does that tie into strange religious practices? Uh, today is spirituality not. and medical. Oh, oh, I we see. We need to keep track of what we do here, Justin. <laughs> um, that's what this week is, so... <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna roll. See, right I thought I here. thought we were going to the strange religious practice of not getting tattoos because the human body is a temple uh, to God, and so you can't deface the temple, which is an Old Testament concept. You didn't get tattoos. Though there are lots of religions that dictate that you have to get tattooed. It's almost passage. it's almost like people came up with religions based on kind of what they wanted. What? Yeah, I know, right? It's kind That's of like talk. kind of like what I think my god wants and what I think I want tend to coincide. I think you think. <laughs> yeah. I think god thinks I think you think. <laughs> okay, I I I have to hear an article that James has. This ought to be good. Okay. He probably found it five minutes ago. Nope. <laughs> okay, so I have three, but the first one that I found is Washington, Washington State is supposed to legalize marijuana in 2014. Woo. But they're concerned since there is medical marijuana, they might not legalize it because it's going to extremely affect the tax revenue that they would get if there wasn't medical marijuana. Because uh, they thought they would get like 500 million in tax per year, but since there's medical marijuana, they don't think that's going to happen. So now they're not even sure if they're going to do it. I just find that like an odd thing, you know? Like let's not since it's partially legal, let's not legalize it because we're just doing it for the money anyways, not because it's you know on par with drinking and it makes no sense that it's illegal um, or anything like that. You know what I mean? I just thought it was on. What about you, Justin? You managed to pull any? Uh, do you have any? Um, the only articles that I had were uh, I had the mother's letter uh, thing, and then I had a, a fun article about um, uh, uh, Mormon magic underwear. Oh my God! Wearing some right now. <laughs> So uh, in in the Mormon religion, uh, they have this underwear. It's not termed magic underwear. Uh, it's termed temp. It's termed a temple garment. Um, but it is underwear that you are supposed to wear all the time. Obviously, you have multiple sets. You know, you don't have one only. Much like normal underwear, for normal people, you have more than one set. Wait. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he couldn't even go along with you on that one. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it has like you have to buy it from special places in order to get it. Um, it, it has like little special symbols on it, um, and I've even heard that it's supposed to even protect you from bullets and things like that um, because it's magic. Um, you know, so there you go. Um, that is one of those weird religious practices I just I don't get, like magic underwear. I feel like the only thing it would protect you from would be getting laid. If you've ever seen it, I actually might have, <laughs> have. a picture of it. Give me just a second here. And I actually think they showed it at some point during the Religious documentary. That's very then... possible. Here you go, guys. That's it. Right there. You see that? Mmm, that's hot. Mm. That's weird, because I combine the one top with the one bottom, is what I wear. <laughs> it, like this one here with that one there? Or yeah. Or that one and that one? <laughs> no, it's just there's more pockets to keep stuff if you do the other way. <laughs> Wait a second, let me get my wallet out. <laughs> I always keep my keys there. Uh, I would think the other one with the, the male bottom would have more pockets for you. No, that's, yeah. A little bit more room. <laughs> anyway, Victoria, <laughs> do you have any uh, any more articles there? Um, I do. First of all, I just want to say that I was not the person who had the marijuana 
article this week. <laughs> this so week. I think the hippie torch has been passed for a little bit. A little bit. It was an ode to you. You knew it right away. You like you picked that for me. I've actually already heard about it. And <laughs> oh. Oh. I, yeah. oh, you ripped that torch right out of my hand, didn't you? I know, I know. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I actually had like three people today talk about how I'm named after a redwood tree and I've got red hair. And I was like, might be fake red. But I'll take that I'll take the hippie cred for it. So it's okay. <laughs> um, okay, so one of my articles, have you ever heard of Gila cells? No. They are a cell strain. Uh, they're called Gila. They've actually been used in developing all kinds of different uh, medical therapies and medicines that have saved countless lives. But they are called Gila because they were originally taken from a woman named Henrietta Lacks. And they were taken, and she was um, a poor black woman back in the 1940s, I believe. Um, she had a very aggressive form of cancer, which is why her cells are so special, is because they don't die. They just continue to multiply, and it, they're incredible. But they were taken without her permission. She never knew about it. She died of the cancer that, you know, they had taken the cells from. But her family never received any sort of, like, they were poor and uninsured and, like, didn't even know that her, their mother was technically famous and, you know, technically her, you know, body was the entire reason that we have the medicines that we have today. And it's been this huge controversy for years ever since it was discovered, ever since it was sort of, like, brought to light. And recently they decided that... Um, from now on, if somebody wants to use the HeLa genome sequence, they have to get um, the family's permission. They still won't receive any medical or uh, not any medical, any um, monetary compensation, but it's um, but it will it now. So when anybody needs to use it, they have to you know get approval from the family. So it's kind of a big deal for the family because it's something that they've been sort of you know, upset about, as I think that they sort of have every right. Yeah. It's uh, opened up a lot of uh, questions about, um, you know, whether or not, like, because if you go and get anything biopsied or if anything is, you know, taken from you in the hospital for, like, testing purposes or whatever, they can, if there's any, they can use all of that material in medical experiments and, you know, whatever is, you know, developed from it, you have no, you know, meta, you know, monetary right to, or, and I don't, it, but it's opened up a lot of questions. I, I'm not going to say my opinion one way or the other, I, I suppose, but it's opened a lot of questions about the, you know, whether or not that's ethical, and if there should be compensation, if they should be allowed to do that without your permission, um, and what would happen to the medical community if they had to get your permission, and or if you had to be paid if, you know, your cells were what was used to develop, you know, a new cancer therapy. So, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking um, that Claire from Heroes would make a lot of money. I've never seen Heroes. Yeah, that's a, yeah, like that's Wolverine's a, regeneration kind of power. Yeah. Gotcha. I probably should have went with Wolverine, but Claire was for some reason the first one I thought of. And the Wolverine movie just came out. Yeah. It's true. I really dropped the ball on that one, guys. Yeah, I'm let's sorry. just start again. Let's start again. From let's, the beginning. From the beginning. End the broadcast. We're going to go ahead and just start from the beginning. Okay, you know, but let's finish it off. That way I have two tries at my last two articles as well. Okay. I did so. I did have I did have an article that I hadn't actually looked up beforehand, but I had thought about like a week ago that does have to do with health. The FDA may uh, ban menthol cigarettes. Really? Be because of a study that had come out that menthol cigarettes are, one, more addictive than regular cigarettes and could, could pose a more serious health concern because the menthol, because menthol is an, uh, an analgesic. It, it is a pain reliever. Um, and so it can, when you smoke, uh, the pain that's normally associated with smoking, uh, the menthol actually alleviates that, and so you could you will you could smoke more or you will smoke more because of that. Wow! 
and so they're more addictive and they can cause you to smoke more and so there was a study that there you go yeah they actually have more health risks too because they form crystals in your lungs Oh well, there you go. All the other things it does. So, so it is possible. There has the FDA hasn't made any moves or anything to actually do it, um, but they about the end, probably a week before the end of July, uh, you know, twenty third, twenty fourth, um, earlier that week, they had there was a study that had come out that was mentioning that. So okay, I have two more quick articles that are like really easy to sum up. The first one is the first pig ever is getting treated for lymphoma in New York. It was a pet pig um, that they're actually treating for lymphoma, which is kind of interesting, I guess. It's very expensive. Um, oh, I see. Then, okay, so it's it's the first pig that's gotten lymphoma that's also getting treated for it, not the very first pig that's getting treated for lymphoma. Like, they found this is him, the very first pig. Or, you, or the first pig that's ever gotten lymphoma. The like first pig that's ever one. getting lymphoma treatment. <laughs> okay, all right. So there have been pigs in the past, and there have been pigs in the past that have gotten lymphoma. <laughs> this is the very first pig that has gotten lymphoma that's also getting treatment for it. I yes. feel like this discussion went way different than you were anticipating. <laughs> and the other one is New Jersey right now is like ready for a summertime baby boom. Um, because of Superstorm Sandy, okay. there was a lot of pregnancies generated during that time, and <laughs> they are all about to pop out. Wow. Yeah. That makes sense, though, because a lot of times when there are big snowstorms and things in this area and or your power goes out, I mean, it's dark. What else are you going to do? I heard that like after the New York, the famous like New York blackout, that like that was like the biggest spike in pregnancies was after that because it, what else? It was New York City. What else are you gonna do? What else are you gonna do? It's yeah. not like you can go out and do anything. Yeah. Might as well stay Can't home. Look at anything. Might as well feel something. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, also, also. Uh, a lot of people are gearing up for the 2016 uh, Olympic, the Olympics, yes, the 2016 Olympics, the 2016 presidential race. You brought up um, New Jersey, and so I thought Chris Christie. If anybody wants to, they can write my name in. Or mine. Or I think you think. All three of us. Dude, you we, can will totally share be it. My vice president. we will share it. We will share it equally. Oh, in that wonder... case, Sequoia gets to be the president just so she can be the first woman president. First woman and a hippie president. That's probably not First true. tattooed president. First women woman president. First atheist president. I, I'm a clear choice. You're gonna have them running to the place where you vote. Boots. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking that I might write in Captain, and then Walnut King. Inside okay. joke, me and Sequoia know what we're talking about here. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe we should take it outside. What? <laughs> My okay. Wi-Fi doesn't stretch that far. <laughs> Mine, does. <laughs> Mine does. I can go sit on my back porch or in the garage. All right, this is already starting to spiral out of control. That's so, okay. We've, we've reached an hour. We so. have reached an hour, so we can say goodbye. So, goodbye uh, now. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Uh, next, now. <laughs> next week should be <laughs> next week should be science and technology. Uh, we will get you guys a uh, more specific kind of general topic, but uh, overarching science and technology. We'll see you guys next week. Please like the video, share it, uh, join our Facebook page. Uh, you know, if you disagree with something that we said, please let us know. If you agree, also please let us know. That's what we're here for. That's the conversation we want to have. Join us in the Hangouts, in the chat room, and everything and such. See you later. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>